Unit two, understanding products and their risks. Folks, 44% of the exam uh, is covered in unit two. Not quite half, but close to half the exam is uh, going to cover products and their risk. In this section, we're gonna talk about stocks and bonds and options. We're gonna talk about limited partnerships. We're gonna talk about uh, uh, systematic risk and non-systematic risk. A lot of information here, really important stuff. Again, 44% of the exam questions are gonna come from the information in Unit 2. Let's start with equities. Let's start with stock. Now, the reason stock is called equities is because people who own stock own the company. They have equity in the company. The first stock we're going to look at is common stock. What's the objective of common stock? What would the investment objective be? A customer would buy common stock for growth, for capital appreciation. They might also buy common stock for income. Common stock is the number one security that we would buy as a possible hedge against inflation. Common stock is the number one security that we would buy as a hedge against inflation. We buy common stock hoping that the price of that stock will go up and the price and any income we receive will at least give us a return greater than inflation. Now, what are the risks associated with investing in common stock? Well, the obvious one, uh, stock price could go down. We could lose our money. We could lose our money. Uh, how much money could we lose? All of our investment. Our loss is limited to the amount that we have invested. What else are, uh, what are some other risks uh, of common stock. Uh, another risk, uh, dividends may be paid, may not be paid. If dividends are paid, they would be paid after preferred dividends. So preferred dividends would be paid prior to common dividends. In liquidation, common stock would be the last to be paid. The common stock would have residual claim to assets if a company were to uh, go bankrupt, go out of business. So the risk associated with investing in common stock. You could lose your money, might not receive any income. The dividend uh, would be subordinate to the preferred dividend and liquidation order, you'd be last in line as a common stockholder. Now, what is liquidation order? secured bonds. Next to be paid uh, would be people who own uh, debenture bonds. Debenture bonds. Next would be subordinated debentures. Next would be preferred stock. And last to be paid would be common stock. So the order of liquidation as it relates to securities, the first to be paid in liquidation would be people who own secured bonds, bonds secured by an asset of the corporation. Next to be paid would be people who, who own debenture bonds. These are unsecured bonds, no asset backing the bond by, by promise. Next to be paid would be subordinated debenture, also unsecured, but subordinate to the debenture in liquidation. Next would be preferred stockholder, and final claim to assets would be the common stockholder. Now let's look at preferred stock. What's the objective of preferred stock? Preferred stock really has only one objective. An investor buys preferred stock for income. What are the risks associated with buying preferred stock? Well, preferred stock pays a fixed dividend. We'll talk more in more detail about that in a few moments. Uh, but the risk is, while the dividend is fixed, it's not guaranteed. 
so dividend payment could be missed. Another risk, uh, while the preferred stock pays me a fixed dividend, that dividend amount might not keep pace with inflation. So I run the risk of inflation. I run, run purchasing power risk. Let's say that the fixed dividend is 4%. Inflation this year is 6%. I lose purchasing power with preferred stock. So preferred stock has the risk of inflation. What's another risk of uh, investing in preferred stock? Well, preferred stock could go up in value or could go down in value. So I could buy preferred stock at $20 a share. It could go down in value to $10 a share. So I could lose capital with preferred stock. What's another risk as it relates to owning preferred stock? Uh, in liquidation, bondholders would be paid before preferred stockholders. So if I own preferred stock and the company goes out of business, people who own secured bonds, people who own unsecured debentures, people who own unsecured subordinated debentures would be paid in liquidation before me, the preferred stockholder. Now, I will be paid before the common stockholder, but after the bondholder. So that's a risk associated with uh, investing in preferred stock. What are the benefits? Well, one benefit, dividends are fixed. Another, dividends, preferred dividends are paid before common dividends. Another benefit, in liquidation, preferred stockholders are paid before common stockholders. So the company made enough money this year to pay dividends to either preferred or common, but not both. Who would the dividends be paid to? Preferred. Preferred have prior claim to dividends. Company goes out of business. There are enough assets to pay preferred stockholders or common stockholders, but not both. Who gets paid? Preferred stockholders. Priority and liquidation. Now, there are several different types of preferred. There's straight preferred, cumulative preferred, callable preferred, convertible preferred, participating preferred, and adjustable rate preferred. Straight preferred has no special feature beyond the fixed dividend. Straight preferred has no special feature beyond the fixed dividend. Cumulative preferred pays a fixed dividend, but has a feature beyond that. Cumulative preferred would pay dividends in arrears. Dividends that are missed will accrue. People who own cumulative preferred would be paid a fixed dividend, and any missed dividends would be paid uh, to cumulative preferred shareholders in the future. Now, Straight preferred shareholders would not be paid any uh, missed dividends. Let's say that the uh, fixed dividend is 4%. The fixed dividend is 4%. In 2015, the company pays a preferred dividend of $4. Now, that is 4% of par, and par value is $100 so would pay a $4 dividend in 2015. In 2016, they only paid two. In 2017, they paid none. So 2015, they paid $4. In 16, they paid two. In 17, they paid none. In 2018, companies had a really good year. Things have gotten better. And they want to get caught up on their dividend payments to preferred stockholders. How much would they have to pay in 2018 to straight preferred shareholders? 4%, $4.
straight preferred shareholders would not be paid any missed dividends. How much would be paid to cumulative preferred shareholders? Well, missed dividends accrue. So how much was missed in 2016? Two dollars. How much was missed in 2017? The full four dollars. They would also have to pay the full four dollars for 2018 to get caught up. So cumulative preferred shareholders in 2018 would be paid $10 in dividends. $10 in dividends. The $2 missed in 2016 would be paid. The $4 missed in 2017 would be paid. And the 2018 dividend of $4 would also be paid. Callable preferred. This is preferred stock that could be retired by the issuing corporation. Callable preferred could be retired by the issuing corporation. Callable preferred benefits who? The issuer or the investor? Callable preferred benefits the issuer. Benefits the issuer. If interest rates were to fall, then the issuer could call in the preferred stock issue preferred stock at a lower dividend rate, reducing their uh, dividend payments. So callable preferred uh, benefits the issuer. Now, for an investor, for an investor, they would need some type of incentive to buy callable preferred. Because if I own callable preferred and I'm being paid 4% in dividends a year and interest rates drop to 2%, I'd like to keep receiving that 4% year after year after year, but I'm going to lose that 4% when my preferred is called in, and I'm going to have to go and invest in something else that's probably going to pay me a much lower return. So this is not advantageous for the investor. It is for the issuer. So the issuer has got to attract investors to buy callable preferred. How could the issuer attract an investor? A uh, couple of ways. One way, the issuer could offer the investor a call protection period. Issuer would say, investor, if you buy this preferred stock from us, this callable preferred, we promise for the next five years, no matter what happens to interest rates, we will not call this stock in. So I have a call protection period. So I'll be paid that 4% a year every year for at least the next five years. How else could an issuer attract an investor? Callable Preferred pays a higher dividend rate than any other preferred stock. Callable Preferred pays a higher dividend rate than any other preferred stock. So Callable Preferred would be suitable for a client who is looking to maximize their income by buying preferred stock. Convertible preferred. This is preferred stock that could be converted at the investor's choice, at the investor's option, into common stock of the issuer. Convertible preferred. Now, the convertible feature has value. Therefore, the issuer would pay a lower dividend rate on convertible preferred than any other preferred stock. When would convertible preferred be suitable? A client is looking to invest in income, but they would also like the opportunity to take advantage of any growth as it relates to the company's common stock. Well, what would I recommend? I would recommend convertible preferred. They buy the convertible preferred for the income, but if the common stock were to go up in value, they could convert the preferred into the common stock and now sell the common stock to take advantage of the common stock growth. I would not recommend straight preferred, cumulative, callable, because there's no ability to get uh, those types of preferred into the common stock. Now, 
which of these preferred stocks would be least suitable for an investor? Let me rephrase that. When would convertible stock be least suitable to an investor? When would a convertible stock be least suitable to an investor? When they're looking to maximize their income. Convertible stock would be least suitable to an investor when the investor is looking to maximize their current income. Now, the reason that convertible preferred is least suitable in this case is because, as I mentioned a few moments ago, since the conversion feature has value, the issuer pays a lower dividend rate on convertible preferred than any other preferred, so that would not be recommended to a client who's looking to maximize their current income. What would be recommended? Callable preferred. Participating preferred. People who own participating preferred could be paid their fixed dividend, but could also be paid an additional dividend beyond the fixed dividend. So if the company had a really good year, made a lot of money, people who own participating preferred could participate in that higher than expected income by way of higher than expected dividends. So what type of preferred stock would pay a dividend above and beyond the fixed dividend? Participating preferred. Participating preferred. Adjustable rate preferred. Adjustable rate preferred is preferred stock that pays a dividend that adjust to some type of index, maybe the 90-day uh, T-bill, whatever the index is. So one year, an adjustable rate preferred uh, stockholder would receive uh, a dividend of 4%. The next year, uh, based on the index, maybe four and a quarter. The next year, maybe three uh, uh, and three quarters the rate is adjustable. Now, the only type of preferred stock that could ever be bought as a possible hedge against inflation would be adjustable rate preferred because it's possible that that adjustable rate will keep pace with inflation based on the index.